Hey y'all, welcome back to Moments with Miss Amy. I am so glad you joined me. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today about something that I have dealt with on and off throughout my life and actually realized I had been trudging along this way not that long ago. And I started out by my daughter asked me to do a book study with her. So she asked if I would like to do a book study on The Last Arrow with Erwin McManus. Well, it's a phenomenal book. I've read it before, so has she. And so I don't mind going back through it at all again, and especially to be able to do a book study with her and get a chance to kind of pick her brain and, you know, hear her thoughts on it. Absolutely. I'm all in. So I got started and seriously, y'all, I'm still in chapter one and I've been taking tons of notes and I'm super excited. I have gotten so much from it. I don't know if you've ever experienced this before or not, but how crazy it is like you can be in a different area in your life, a different level of growth, read something and get something out of it. You'd read it before and you never got that. And that's where I'm at. So I'm super excited about it. But I really realized what I was reading today was something that just really spoke to me. And I felt like I should share it with you. So I'm going to read you just a few little notes from Erwin McManus's book, The Last Arrow. Um, this is actually what he wrote. And then I'm going to talk to you about my take on it. It's just a little snippet. So here we go. And while I always hoped that one day there would be something special about me, the truth is I made my home in the average, if not the below average. I found a strange solace and safety in my power of invisibility and made obscurity my residence. I do not believe anyone is born average, but I do believe that many of us choose to live a life of mediocrity. The great tragedy in this, of course, is that there's nothing really ordinary about us. We might not be convinced of this, but our souls already know it's true, which is why we find ourselves tormented when we choose to live our lives beneath our capacities and callings. Here is the painful reality. We will find ourselves divined by the average if we do not choose to defy the odds. We must war against the temptation to settle for less. Average is always a safe choice, and it's the most dangerous choice we can make. So kind of my take on this, why would average be a dangerous choice to make? Well, honestly, because in my thoughts with this, at the end of our life, when we look back over all that we've done and all that we've gone through, what are the things that are going to matter the most? I believe those are things that we've done to make a bigger impact on our loved ones, our family, our friends, and this world. We've been called to do more. You guys know that's my belief, that you have been called to do more, and you can. I've been called to do more, and I can. And because of that, I really feel like Erwin explaining about average and being stuck in that really spoke to me because it helped me to realize why sometimes I just feel so blah. And just, uh, and almost, you know, like that January gray day where it's like slushy and cold and yucky if you live up north. Um, of course, we don't have that here in Florida, but we do get the gray days, okay? But just that feeling of, uh, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be. And I find that I just don't have energy. I find that I always see the negative. I see the gray clouds and I don't see the rainbow when I'm living that type of existence where all I'm doing is getting by. Get up, get out there, get driving, doing my Uber and Lyft thing, and then come home and that's it. And I'm just existing. And I wondered why I felt so down and negative when I did that. Reading Irwin's book, and especially that line about how our souls are tormented when we're living beneath our capabilities and our callings, just, like, turned a light on for me. A realization of, ah, oh, that would be why. Because on the flip side of it, 
when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which as you guys probably know, is I really feel like I should be encouraging others, okay? So when I'm doing something to encourage others, like these videos, uh, my blogs, talking to people, uplifting them, being their greatest cheerleader, when I'm doing that stuff, it's awesome. I am like, I just feel like I'm on such a higher level. I have more energy. I feel healthier. I'm able to overcome things. And it's just, it's phenomenal, the difference. But what happens is I'll go through phases of times that I don't realize that I'm not doing those things I need to be doing. And I'm just getting by and I'm living in such a blah way. And it takes something to shake me up, to make me look at it and realize, whoa, wait a minute, back up. That's not how I want to be. Sometimes life gets so stacked up with things that need to get done that I forget to live. I don't know if that ever happens to you or not. But to me, when I was reading Irwin's things and he was talking about like living a life of mediocrity and kind of hiding in the invisibility and stuff, not wanting people to to really see him. He just wanted to be there and exist. This is my take on it. You read the book, see what you think. Um, <clears throat> but with that, I realized that when I live like that, I'm not happy. But I don't notice it until something happens to make me realize what I have going on. Living a life of mediocrity is accepting things where they're at. This is my opinion. Is accepting where things are at. It is just doing the bare minimum of what you have to. Maybe doing just a little bit more than it takes so that you don't get fired, but not enough to really get the attention from the boss to be given more responsibility. Average mediocrity. <laughs> that would be one way to explain it. But when you live like that, you may notice that the people that are around you are doing the same thing. And it's important to pay attention to that. It's not a wrong thing to chill with your friends. I mean, come on. All of us love to just hang out and relax, right? But it is something that you might want to pay attention to if all of your friends are just like you and everyone is noticing the gray clouds instead of the rainbow. Everybody is, oh, another day, another dollar. Or, oh, it's Monday. Because when we're living like that, we're not doing all that we could be doing. And it's crazy because if you do stop, at least for me, stop and look back, I realize that the people that I'm most attracted to are those that are out there doing something more. Those that are out there chasing their call. For example, have you ever noticed that someone who is chasing their passion and their purpose is like a light that just draws the moth to the flame? I know for me, I have. I have a friend who's a massage therapist. Now, he is amazing as a massage therapist. But even more than that, he is always working on learning more doing more, not just about his profession, but even about himself. And that's just something that being around him, his energy level is so high when he's chasing that, where he can be better to help people. And it's just, it's phenomenal. Or my husband, okay, my husband is a mechanic. And when he comes home and he's gone after, especially an electrical project that he's worked on and focused and solved what was going on, being around him and hearing the stories, it actually makes it fun. And y'all, I am not the least bit mechanical or electrically inclined, okay? But to see his passion for solving that problem, because that's what he does. He's a problem solver. And him getting a chance to do that, being in that zone, is what makes it so amazing. So stop and think, who in your circle of influence is like that, that's doing more, doing something, 
And pay attention. Do you want to be around that person? Do you want to hear more about their, what they're doing? And does being around them help you to want to step out and do more yourself? Because that's the thing. We are the average of the people that we surround ourselves with. And so that is actually a quote. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to say maybe Robert Kiyosaki. So I've done a lot of reading over the years. Can't tell you for sure who said that one, but you are the average of the people that you hang around with. And so if you notice that you're hanging around with people that are kind of in the dumps, realize that that could be why you're feeling in the dumps. So what can you do? Not just cut off your friends. I mean, come on, like seriously, you're just going to wipe them away and not be friends with them anymore. No, no, no. It's not that at all. But what can you do to start changing things? Maybe bring in some more positive influence. Maybe start changing yourself. Because if you're changing yourself, your friends may want to do the same thing. One of the best suggestions I can make, do what Georgia and I are doing. Get the last arrow. Maybe do a book study with a couple of your friends. And start seeing how you can start living for more. Because you were created for more. So again, thank you so much for joining me with Moments with Miss Amy. And I really hope that you got some value from it. If you did, please click like, make sure you subscribe, and I would love to hear how you fight average.